Graveyard Keeper is a macabre simulation RPG with similarities to Stardew Valley, originally released on the PC in 2018 with an Xbox One and PS4 version earlier this year that was marred by serious performance issues. Have these been fixed? Is it a rotten stench or a ghoulish delight worth picking up? Let's jump in and find out. The game opens up with a short cutscene. You are plodding along when suddenly you are run over by a car and presumably killed. You wake up in a surreal, medieval style world and are told you are the latest hapless soul tasked with being a graveyard keeper. You are thrust into this position and your only help is a talking skull with amnesia. A corpse is delivered which you need to prepare for burial by performing an autopsy, slicing some fresh ish meat before digging a grave, burying the corpse and placing a headstone and small fence to improve the burial site. There are subtle hints that suggest which direction you need to go in with some quests and NPCs that deliver lines with a dark sense of humour, but this is an open ended tale which you can tackle at your own pace. The game never rushes you along and whilst you do progress your aim of getting back to your own world is a loose one. The game world is full of ghoulish content and the pervasive sense that everything is not right. There are witch burnings and the cult-like characters throughout. Whilst the writing is quite decent, you do get the feeling that the story was plodded onto the back of the game after the main gameplay elements were produced. After the initial scene, you are left to your own devices. The game purposely leaves you with a couple of hints, but doesn't hold your hand. Your initial task is to improve the quality of your graveyard to a point that impresses the church enough that they promote you, letting you lead your own flock and progress, but it took me quite some time to get to grips with the task required. You will notice that the graveyard is overgrown and a tidy up job is in order. There is a surprising amount of content and a vast array of game mechanics to discover. At first, you will focus on the base mechanics, chopping down trees and digging up stones for raw materials which can be used to create tools, items and machinery which lets you create more sophisticated items. For example, chopping down trees will produce logs. Logs in turn can be chopped into wedges and chunks which you can use to create firewood and planks. The firewood can be used to heat a furnace that can be used to melt ore and produce metal objects, whilst planks can be crafted into wooden headstones, a workbench and a wooden anvil. Each task will take up a certain amount of energy. At first, using basic tools, you won't last very long before needing to head to sleep and hit the hay. But as you progress, you will create better tools that mean less energy is expended in these tasks. The pleasure is in the discovery of which resources lead to which areas and in how to manage your resources effectively. On the flip side, this is also a source of frustration. It's very conceivable to spend hours not really progressing and with little direction. If you have played similar titles, you will have a bit of a head start in understanding how things hang together. As you interact with the world and its objects, you will be prompted by a sad and hilarious talking donkey, delivering a daily fresh corpse. Taking it down to the morgue lets you dissect it and extract all sorts of delights from a slice of meat to extracting blood and more. The game is not overly graphic, but its material is certainly squeamish. Bodies will have a certain number of skulls that represent how good or evil they were in their life. Carving them up taints the quality of the body and can make them worse. The number of skulls is critical as it impacts the quality of your graveyard. Bearing a body detracts or adds points to the score and the number of skulls they have limits how much you can improve their plot through the use of better headstones and fencing. Letting the body rot detracts from this score so it's an interesting mechanic that you need to manage. If you get a body to the state that's so bad, your best bet is to throw it in the river and be rid of it. Each interaction will gain you little red, blue and green items that you will eventually figure out are the game's experience points. There is a huge skill tree that will keep you going for a very long time. Red points are obtained from manual labour tasks, green from farming resources and blue for fulfilling intelligence based tasks which you will unlock a little bit later on. The skill tree, known as technologies, cover farming in nature, smithing, building, cookery, anatomy and alchemy, theology and book writing. The game features a week and day and night system with certain NPCs turning up on certain days. You will venture into this town fairly soon in order to exchange the certificates of burial received by burying a corpse for cash. And whilst there you will pick up tasks and hints from characters, things like deliver me X number of vegetables or exhume a corpse, a lovely weekend task. The dialogue is tongue in cheek throughout, whilst the content is morbid it never takes itself too seriously. As you begin to discover new regions on the map you will bump into enemies, the combat is not core to the game and it's a simple button bashing affair. You will upgrade tools, start a farm, extract honey from bees and much much more. 
At your home, you will upgrade items in order to build better machinery and start a newer and more complex items. The game's pace is fairly relaxed. There is no real time sensitivity other than ensuring corpses are not left out for too long and rot. Certain tasks need to be performed on certain days, such as preaching at your church on a Sunday to get loads of cash from your subjects. But the days are fairly long. There is a lot to do here, but it does feel a bit loose without any guidance. You may receive a hint only from one NPC, and if you don't pay attention, it can mean not understanding a goal for a very long time. The result is a real grind. This is intentional. Progress is slow, and you get a sense of achievement from putting the graft in. Later on you open up dungeons, more areas to manage, and there's plenty to do. You're never going to be bored or without something to achieve. The controls are simple enough, though the menu layout is not ideal. It can be a little bit tedious to navigate. Similarly, the quests are not displayed in a logical way. Underneath each NPC, you will see how good your relationship is and what tasks you have outstanding. It's not the cleanest system to manage. Bag management is also a chore. Without enough space for your items, you are forced to store things in multiple chests. The game gives you a lot of freedom up front, but it suffers from pacing and a lack of direction as a result. With so many deep systems, it feels spread a bit thin at times. That said, you can sink countless hours tilling your fields or slicing off a corpse's skin, turning it into paper and improving your writing. Yes, it's a dark set of systems on offer as a graveyard keeper. Hamza El Hamri produced the game's score, complete with around 15 tracks. The quality is there and the tracks feature strings and wind instruments for rhythmic, soothing tunes that are perfect for a background. My only criticism is that the game's main title theme, whilst great, is used heavily and there's not enough rotation, leading to some boredom of repetition. The game uses 2D sprites very well. The art style works given the source material. Too much detail would have just been a no-go. It feels like a sim from the early 2000s and the sizing is great. There are a lot of items, characters and backgrounds. I love the variation from beaches to swamps and the little touches are nice such as the changing weather. Rain, fog and other effects give variety to the areas you frequent often. Where I don't like the visuals are in the dialogue, menus and general pop-ups. They don't feel optimised for the switch and text often bleeds outside of boxes whilst menus don't look very nice to my eyes. The map is very well drawn on the other hand. In general, the game feels like it's not fully finished, which is a shame. I didn't experience any truly game-breaking bugs, but I have seen reports of NPCs being stuck for others, leaving them unable to progress completely. My experience was not quite so bad, but I did experience quite a lot of unpolished areas, from the aforementioned text bleeding out of boxes, to unusual jumps and items and NPCs vanishing. The game also crashed on me twice during my time, which, whilst not too bad, is not ideal. On the move, I saw no differences. The game ran smoothly and was no worse than on a TV. Nevertheless, given they had more time to fix issues from other platforms, it's disappointing that a lot of these issues seem to have made their way over to the Switch. HD Rumble is also missing, which is a shame as it would have been a good fit here. Coming in at £19.99 in the US and £17.99 in the UK, the game is priced quite well, though it's disappointing that the DLC is not included in that cost. It will set you back another $5, which feels a little bit greedy to be honest. There is no doubting the amount of content, online play and social features would have been welcome along with a bit more polish overall. As a summary, Graveyard Keeper is a large, free roaming world with plenty to do and explore. There are a lot of systems to keep you playing for hours on end. There is a lack of direction and polish that will put many off, but if you look past these issues, there is a quality game to be enjoyed. It's disappointing that the DLC is not included within the cost and additional features and a bit more care would have gone some way. As it stands for me then, this is still a 7 out of 10, though it's definitely not for everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this video, I'm James Imero and this is Switchwatch. If you're looking for a similar title and haven't yet played it, check out our review of Stardew Valley. I'll see you on the next one guys, take care.